Hi, I'm Hull History Nerd, and welcome to another episode of Old Yorkshire. And this time, we're going to be looking at Danes Dyke. The chalk upland of Flamborough Head isn't just home to Flamborough Castle. It's also home to an earthwork ditch some two and a half miles long that's prehistoric in origin called Danes Dyke. And it spans right across the neck of the headland, cutting it off from the mainland. Now, don't let the name fool you. It's actually nothing to do with the Danish. The uh, name was given by historians and they didn't realize the deep history of the place. Archaeologists have in fact investigated Flamborough and the ditch itself and found evidence of civilization here as early as the Middle Bronze Age. Now just to give you some sort of perspective, that's 3,000 years ago. That's quite a way back. I wonder what they were like, these very early Yorkshire people. I wonder what they were like before the Anglo-Saxons and the Romans and the Celts and the Vikings. It would have been quite interesting. I bet they would have thought that this fantastic upland would have been like a fortress. So it's easy to see why they may have built a ditch and bank defence to protect themselves here. Danes Dyke is the kind of earthwork that's often referred to by archaeologists as a linear earthwork. That means it goes in pretty much a straight line, so as to differentiate it from the other kinds of earthworks that form a ditch and bank around something and go in a curve or even in a full circle. Some of these linear earthworks were often simply denoting the boundaries between different territories. Sometimes they were even just built to stop livestock from wandering off from one people's land into another people's land. But sometimes they were defensive and the sheer scale of Danes Dyke certainly lends weight to the idea that this may well have been one of those defensive boundaries. The dyke runs north to south across the neck of the entire headland. It would have been an enormous undertaking for a prehistoric people. It's four metres deep and 12 metres across in places. And this is the natural end at the south, perhaps the valley that leads down to the beach that would have inspired the original dyke, but the whole thing is of this kind of proportion. This epic ditch that would have been excavated by labour and the soil piled up to form a huge bank. The bank itself laid on top of compressed stones, almost a kind of aggregate base to give it stability. On top of that, a wooden rampart. All of a sudden, when you see the scale of this, building a ditch and a bank for defence doesn't seem such a silly idea after all. To Bronze Age and Iron Age people's intent on attacking, this would have been quite the formidable obstacle and very easily defensible. At the southernmost end of Danes Dyke, lays a small natural valley where the outlet from a spring drifts gently into the sea. It's long assumed by archaeologists that this small natural valley provided the starting point for Danes Dyke. The builders of the dyke saw the dimensions of this defensible area and they simply dug it out and extended it across the length of the entire headland. So here, at the southern end of the dike, we come to a natural entry onto a chalk beach, which apparently is absolutely fantastic for fossil hunting. In fact, in a way, chalk itself is a fossil. If you want to get into some seriously deep history of this area, this whole beach this whole headland is built from the fossilised bodies of tiny microscopic creatures called Foraminifera, which existed sometime between 150 and 66 million years ago. 
and that's what chalk is. This used to be the seabed millions of years ago and here it is, a headland above the sea. So we know that Danes Dyke was built sometime around 3,000 years ago in the Bronze Age because we found evidence of Bronze Age occupation in the dike itself. But the occupation of the headland goes back far further than that. There's some evidence to suggest that people were living here as long ago as 10,000 years ago, the Stone Age. Though that evidence is fragmentary and a bit scattered. But what we don't know much about are the original inhabitants of Danes Dyke, the people who built it. We don't know where they lived on the headland because we've never found their settlement. Now it could be, and this is a possibility, that actually nobody lived here, but that it was used as a kind of refuge for all the surrounding farmers for miles around. In the event of invasion, they would retreat to the headland behind Danes Dyke and fortify themselves until it was all over. But it's more likely that it was simply people who lived here, but we just haven't found their village yet. And that's not difficult. Archaeology, after all, relies upon tiny trenches dug here and there to try and find anything out at all. And Flamborough's headland is five square miles behind this dike. So it's perhaps not surprising that we don't actually know that much about where they lived specifically. What we do know is that the dike itself was added to and fortified during the Iron Age. There's been extra dikes built and extra uh, embankments built that all join up with Danes Dyke at various points along the headland. We know that perhaps even some of that work might have been down to the Vikings, because even in the Dark Ages this would still have been a very, very valuable defensive place. But in 1066 the Normans came and they dragged Britain screaming into the Middle Ages. They brought with them the castle the last word in military fortification. And with them, they also brought the means to destroy the castle, weaponry that would make short work of a wooden fence on a hill. So the age of Dane's dyke was at an end, as terms of it being a defensive place, but the earthworks persisted because they're huge. And frankly, they're not going anywhere. Ditches and embankments of this size last for thousands and thousands of years. These days, it's a nature reserve. So you can come here and park your car and take a walk amongst this ancient, ancient landscape. <laughs>